Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Thursday, August 23rd, 2012. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Let's get right into the charts here. We'll start off with the usual S&P 500 E-mini futures. The futures have been all over the map this morning, trading higher uh, in the overnight session and then really rolling over a bit here. Um, there's some news out now saying that um, the Federal Reserve may not be looking to do a QE based on the economic data that has been released, and that is sending the markets lower. Yesterday, obviously, you know the markets were down for most of the session until the Fed minutes were released, and then the market had a big, big surge yesterday. Um, really, right around 2 o'clock when the minutes were released, you could see the big surges, and the market rallied up on anticipation of a QE. And now you see that the Fed minutes are fading off, and the market's coming back down. So again, uh, we'll see how it plays out and shakes out. Again, we'll have to watch the dollar. We'll just have to see how the dollar plays out. Right now, the dollar is moving lower, which tells you that the markets can inflate. Um, the dollar hasn't really traded that well inversely to the um, S&P 500 index or any other stock index the last couple of days. It's been what somewhat a little bit lackluster, but nonetheless, it's still been intact for 10 years, and I think it's still one of the most important charts that anyone can follow. The dollar today is trading lower by about 12 cents at the moment, so we'll see how this thing uh, plays out a little bit later. Nonetheless, um, the futures are down. But they're trying to hold here. And we'll see if the dollar goes lower. Perhaps the futures will get a little bit of a bid. But I think the QE euphoria is the reason for this. And once uh, traders see that there's not going to be a quantitative easing or, or so uh, a quantitative easing so quickly by the Federal Reserve, um, a you know, some money could come out of this market as this uh, market is up on the, on the ba basis that there is going to be another stimulus program across the board. All right, let's take a look at a few other things out there. Let's go to gold and silver. Gold had a huge move yesterday. Today, gold is up 23 points to $1,664. Um, but most of that move came yesterday in, in the uh, after the COMEX closed, and um, people were trading in on electronic trading. So let's take a look at the GLD today. You'll see the GLD is trading right around the 161 level. That's basically where it closed yesterday at 160.54. So... Got a little bit of a 50 cent move up in, in gold, but uh, again, we'll see how gold reacts today, especially if the dollar can catch a bid. I think gold does pull back right now. Um, gold is holding steady, though, this morning. So, But uh, most of that move on the spot price was made yesterday after uh, gold closed for the session in electronic trade. It did move up after the Fed announcement, after the Fed minute announcement, I should say. Uh, let's take a look at oil. Oil's trading up 52 cents to $97.78 a barrel. Uh, again, um, pretty good move. Again, weaker dollar, higher oil price. That's just the way it works. Take a look at the USO, which is a good proxy for light sweet crude. <clears throat> and you'll see that it was trading much, much higher earlier and now trading at $36.43. Uh, $36 Still up uh, a little bit from yesterday's close, which was $36.22. Again, if the dollar moves lower, oil should move higher. Another thing that traders are starting to watch, at least I am myself, is gasoline. Gasoline is getting very, very extended here. It's, it's, it's just continuing to grind up higher. Um, looks like it wants to get into the $60 level on the UGA. This is the United States Gasoline Fund. Look at the daily chart of this, and you can see the run that this has had. So this is all inflation creation um, by the central bankers, and that's pro probably part of the, uh, uh, the problem with doing another quantitative easing now is that you know gasoline could maybe double from this price and uh, that would that would not be beneficial to US consumers or anybody else in the world that needs to use commodities or even something like simple as gasoline so again gasoline is surging higher again if the dollar is weaker gasoline is going higher that's the bottom line alright let's take a look at um, <clears throat> some stocks in the news today uh, we want to start off with I guess we'll start off with guest jeans I guess we will Let's take a look at GES here. This stock is getting hammered. Um, I worked out a couple levels here this morning. Um, traders could watch. This thing's trading right around 28 bucks. So there, there is some support around 28. Um, next level would be 26.72. There's also going to be some more support at 26 dollars and 15 cents. Then it will be a big double bottom going back all the way till May, and that would be around 24 dollars and 25 cents. So. Um, <clears throat> those are your respective support levels. This is a strong gap down, which tells me it can get down there. And it's also a light volume stock, which means 
it can overshoot and decline further. So watch that level there for uh, guest jeans. Um, those levels all will come into play. But like I said, right now it's trying to fight this support level. But with this base here, it should break and go a little bit lower. Um, let's take a look at Hewlett Packard. HPQ is a ticker symbol. Stock has been really struggling. Um, you could see the sell-off yesterday after the close down pretty sharply, around 1840 right now. Um, there's nothing to do here as far as I'm concerned until the stock. It will have a little bit of support around 1740 if it gets down there. And then really it's, it's going to be um, <clears throat> a $16 stock, and, and that's what you have to look for at the moment. But right now it's only down at 18.40 a share, uh, closed at 19.20. It's not getting, I mean, it's still a, a you know, 4 or 5% decline, but nothing drastic here. You're going to watch 18.18, and then after that, it's going to be down to 16 bucks, maybe even 15.75 for the most part. All right, so that's what we have. That should, uh, that could make its way down there as well. Let's take a look at big lots. Ticker symbol BIG. Uh, this stock is just getting annihilated this morning. Um, it closed at $38.85, coming off of a bearish wedge. Uh, pretty good decline. Right now, the stock has support at 30 bucks, so that's holding. That breaks. Um, the next big support level for this stock is going to be $28 and then $25.91. Okay, so you can look for bounces at both of those levels. But this is a nice bearish base um, coming down pretty good. So, again, it has a chance to get down there. It is bound, has bounced off $30. Uh, with the light volume trading this morning and back up to 32 but a break of that 30 30 is support but so you're going to have thirty dollars twenty eight dollars and twenty five ninety one those are going to be your support levels on this one okay uh, let's take a look at Hain Celestial this is one that is really having a big big move it's coming off of a big weekly base so this has some strength to go a little bit higher right now it's trading at roughly uh, 64 bucks a share closed at 56.91. The stock should have some resistance around 67, if I'm not mistaken. And you have to do mathematical levels on this. You can't even, um, <clears throat> you can't really judge this one uh, based because it's a new all-time high uh, on any charts. You have to go mathematical on this. So it's going to be 67, and then real 70.50. Um, it is overbought though. That's the one thing you have to watch for right now. Stock is overbought. But it's coming out of a weekly base, so it has a chance to hold up. It's also um, a light volume name. And what I mean by that is it rarely trades a million shares a day. So this one could face some resistance around 67 and then at 70 and 70, 50. But it's still a tough stock to trade because it is at that new all-time high. And all we have to go off of is mathematical points. So, uh, again, um, when you don't have the chart in your, in, you know, to work off, it makes it a little bit tough. So be careful there if you're going to try to fade this one. I probably wouldn't recommend it unless you're really a very good astute trader. I would leave this one alone. But good move on Hain Celestial this morning. But again, 67 and then 70.50 respective resistance points, uh, mathematical resistance points a little bit higher. All right, with that said, everybody, I want to wish you all a great trading day. Oh, there is a little bit of news out right now. looks like you do have weekly jobless claims out, but I don't think that's moving the market much. Uh, really not doing anything. So we'll leave it there. It looks like continuous, uh, continuing claims, week ending 811, 3.317 uh, million versus 3.313 million. Not a big deal. The market could care less. Market only cares about that action in a dollar, and it cares about the European bond market. That's what's moving things these days. So again, I'm not going to make a big deal about the, uh, the weekly jobless claims, but we'll leave it at that. Right now, futures are down. One and a quarter points, not really that big of a decline, but we'll see where we go after the opening bell. Uh, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you on the charts tomorrow. Take care now.